I'm pleased now to introduce Eric Zabinski, a degree candidate for a Bachelor of Science in Communication with a concentration in journalism and a minor in English writing. Eric enjoys storytelling, adventure, journalism, learning, and video games. He's the editor-in-chief of the Clarion Talk. He's hosted the talk show, Voice of Eagle, freelance for the Royal City Derrick and News Herald newspapers, and written for various publications, including The Odyssey, Order of the Arrow Communications, Gamnesia, and the Clarion Honors Chronicle. He has conducted and presented research on fake news, perceptions of police brutality, and the changing media landscape. After graduation, Eric plans to become a web or print journalist. He is from Warren, Pennsylvania, and is accompanied today by his parents, Ruth and Jeff Zabinski, and his brother, Ryan. Please join me in welcoming Eric Zabinski. Hello, there's a lot of you out there. So, we're here. So this is called commencement. We're about to commence on the next stage of our lives. That's the usual. It's usual for people like us at a university, one of so many in the world, to prepare ourselves both career-wise and mentally for the final chapter of our lives. Because the way I see it, we had childhood, we then had this weird life puberty called college, where we figured out who we really are. And now the final act is about to begin, adult life. And I don't know about you, but personally, I'm both excited and terrified of what adult life may just entail. Since for a lot of us, we don't know exactly what adult life will give us. Kids, pets, family, careers we enjoy, jobs we, we might want to rush right on through, tragic missteps, amazing milestones. I think it's slightly useless to make specific plans for the decades to come. Unless you know exactly what you want, and if that's the case, more power to you. That's not me, and I doubt that's hardly any of you out there. For, for the rest of us, this is what I wanted to talk about today. Why we live, why we exist. Because, yeah, we're going to live and do so foreseeably a lot of stuff in the decades to come in this final chapter. This hopefully like 60 year long chapter, unless something bad happens. That's a given, unless our lives get cut short for some unfathomable reason. But motivations, those are, those are not always a given. Sure, there might be those who are greedy, hypocritical, and mean-spirited in theirs, but I like to think that we went to school here not just to learn the academics of our major, but also to understand how to better ourselves as human beings. So let's get down to what we should aspire to. I've always believed a life lived for only oneself is a life wasted. Once you're dead and gone, that's it. It's over. What have you done for the world? What have you done for others? You've got to make that impact. Yet, I've also learned the hard way, as some of us have, I'm very sure, that not taking care of yourself isn't the way to go either. If you're not in good enough shape to shape the world and others' lives around you, you're going to be stuck in a self-destructive cycle. This has finally led me into thinking about what I think is a natural, healthy, three-step approach when thinking about our greater life motivations. Fittingly for me as an Eagle Scout, it actually reminds me of the three key principles of the Scout promise. Number one, it's what we can do for ourselves. Number two, it's what we can do for others, the people around us. And number three, it's what we can do for the world at large to leave a positive legacy. So let's go in order then, from smallest to largest. First, we have ourselves. We have to start taking care of things there. If we're not good, if we can't mentally and emotionally sustain ourselves, don't worry, I'm not going to lecture you all about healthy diets and exercise. If we don't do that, then we can't do much of anything. 
Recently, I've discovered just how hard self-love can actually be. I mean, it's actually quite easy not to think about it. Just put your head down and work. You may tell yourself that. Or distract yourself in a myriad of ways to get rid of the nagging feelings of insecurity, depression, loneliness. I have a feeling I haven't been alone in those feelings. We all get down on who we are sometimes. To this I say, remind you of what makes you, you. Don't let your self-worth hinge on the certificate of graduation. In fact, don't let it hinge on other people's perceptions at all. Something I did this semester really helped me put into perspective how I should look at myself. I simply wrote down one sentence, 12 words in all. It was something I wrote to sum up who I am if I never accomplished anything in my entire life. And it made me feel good inside, like better than most awards, better than commencement. I challenge you to do that for yourself. You might find that if you care about yourself as much as you do others, you might do even greater things. So as an extension of that, I challenge you to care deeply, selflessly for others. Something really can't be selfless though. It's impossible. It can't be selfless for humans like us. Because I know we draw satisfaction from doing kind things for people. Whether you're holding open the door for someone like I've seen so many of you do out in the audience, or being a shoulder to cry on for a troubled friend, those acts will fulfill you in due time. And of course, you'll be positively affecting the lives of those around you and those you care about. As long as you have those good intentions and think about how you can really make a difference for someone, the end goal is likely to be a productive one for all parties involved. Things can get a little more complicated, admittedly, when we direct our gaze to the entire world. Well, I mean, maybe complicated isn't the right word. Intimidating might be a more accurate phrase. As one of more than seven billion people on this planet Earth, do you really have the power to change the world? Well, I ask you all to define world changing. Leaving a legacy isn't just curing cancer or inventing the next <clears throat> real hoverboard, not just a skateboard with two big doofy wheels on the side. It's following your passion, whatever it is, and doing something that you think will change the lives short and long term of people you may never even meet. You can change their lives for the better. Our lives are a series of watersheds with positivity, strength, and triumphs as the rainwater that's get, it gets collected into each other. A display of affection now or an amazing success in your future job could very likely have the butterfly effect of changing the status quo or changing someone's life in the future. And you might not ever know the impact you had, but it is possible. So you have to try and you have to do your best. So as long as you take care of yourself, draw strength by taking care of those you love, and use that overall power to leave your mark on the world, the term failure will mean anything but. It'll mean you'll live your life not on the road stretching towards some far off success in the horizon and happiness. No, you'll always live on that road of success and happiness. Sure, there will be bumps. No road is perfect, but you will ride that road not having to worry about the next pit stop because the ride itself really will be that wonderful. I know it's cliche, a lot of people have said it over the years to me, pop culture. It is not about some imagined invisible destination. It is about the journey. So trust in life and the love of other people, the love of yourself, and let that lead you forward forever. The Clarion University family of friends, teachers, staff, and volunteers prepared us for this journey, this next chapter called Adult Life, and we should thank them. And our family, 
and other loved ones deserve a round of applause for preparing us our entire lives. Thanks for having me. Now let's get out there, better ourselves, and change the world.